Another way of looking at it is through the hormonal signals. You may have heard of the insulin to glucagon ratio. Uh, when that gets low, you get into the energy phase. And this is, yes, that same hormonal signal that controls ketogenesis. If you're going to be ketogenic, you have to get insulin down relative to glucagon. mTOR is the switch that turns on the build phase. What about the energy phase? It turns out there's another switch called AMPK. AMPK will turn on the energy phase. And AMPK and mTOR are kind of fighting for who's dominant. AMPK is an energy sensor. So you might know about ATP being a way that, we, a kind of energetic currency that we use. You might not have heard of AMP. Generally, AMP is what's left over when you're using ATP. And um, so there's this kind of cycling back and forth of using ATP, getting AMP out, and then you can remake it into AMP later. Um, the main controls for that have to do with glucose and fat. So when you're in a high glucose state, this enables you to make a lot of ATP. And that suppresses AMPK. Now high fat, of course, also allows you to make a lot of ATP, but there's another uh, important fact about high fat. The more circulating fat you have, the more uh, it raises AMP through a different pathway. And so in balance, if you look at the amount of AMP compared to ATP, uh, you'll have more AMP. And that's the signal that AMPK is looking for. It says, how much ATP do you have compared to AMP? So the, the sum of this knowledge is that when glucose is high, your AMPK is suppressed. And when fat is high uh, and glucose is low, then AMPK is activated. All right, so that brings us to the question of whether or not a carnivore diet actually inhibits mTOR. The fact is anything that's ketogenic activates the energy phase. And the reason for that is because in order to get energy from fat, you have to be in the energy phase. It's, it's almost tautological. But then the question that people keep coming to me with is, what about protein? Doesn't protein disrupt keto ketosis and therefore disrupt the energy phase and therefore activate mTOR? And the answer is yes and no. <laughs> one way of looking at this is through the lens of ketogenesis. So one thing that we know about mTOR is if mTOR is activated, ketogenesis is suppressed. So that means if there's ketogenesis, what does that say about mTOR? It must be. It must be inhibited.